Hi everyone and welcome to TransWest Truck Trailer RV located in Frederick, Colorado. My name is Larry Vickers. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new Freightliner M2 106. The reason I chose this specific truck is we've had a couple of calls on that in the last few days. So today we're going to take a closer look. Now as you can tell we are already hooked up to a 40 foot toy hauler trailer. Now this trailer filled to the max weighs 20,000 pounds. And the reason for doing this is to give you a visual aid of exactly what this truck was designed to do. This is right in this truck's wellhouse. So today we're really gonna focus on comparing this to pickup trucks, because I understand people in the market for this truck are also taking a look at pickups, and I understand why, because they can really tow a lot, can't they? Well. That's all fine and good, but once we're up and going with this trailer behind us, what's going to stop us? So let's take a little bit closer look at that. I brought some aids with me today. This is the drum for this specific truck. These have air brakes. So when we're going and we go to press the brake, this is what's going to stop you. Now let's compare that. This is what's going to stop you in a 2000. 18 GMC 3500. So if you just compare those two, pulling 20,000 pounds behind you, what's more likely to stop you? In addition, this is the shoe for this truck. This is a brake pad for that same pickup we just visited about. So once we're coming down the Rocky Mountains and we go to hit the brakes and it comes time to stop, which one are we more relying and more dependable on it's going to slow us down and stop not only you but your family this one or compare that that one so as you can tell from a safety standpoint it's really not even close so let's take an even closer look at this truck let's start in the back it is available underneath this plate is the hitch for a traditional bumper pull trailer so if we find ourselves in the need for a bumper pull uh, there's the hitch for that in addition the summit hauler conversion puts 800 extra pounds right over the rear axle so that's a safety standpoint advantage as well not only does that help us in terms of traction but keeps us from hydroplaning now as we look this is very simple to hook up it comes with the gooseneck ball um, it has a camera that shoots down directly to the bed of the truck as you're hooking it up. So when we hooked it up, it was very, very simple. Safety chains attach there. The lights attach right here. Now right beside the lights is another plug-in. That's for uh, additional cameras. You can actually hook up to three more cameras. Some guys like to put you know, a camera in the trailer or on the sides of the truck, whatever the case may be. You can simply hook it up right there. Another advantage to Summit Hauler is this is aluminum. This isn't steel as the competition does. This is aluminum. So 10 years from now, guys, this is going to look exactly the way it does today. There isn't going to be any rust. As we start to walk around the truck, we'll notice there is a storage component here in the rear. The Summit Hauler conversion does have the most storage capacity of any truck on the market. You will see up here is all rhino lined for protection for longevity and durability. As we walk up here and take a look at the front storage bin, we will see we do have a hookup for an air hose. The batteries are located under here. This is actually a trickle charger. So if we find ourselves in a spot, for example, at night where we're gonna be running the, the DVD, we're gonna be running the lights, and we can plug it in, that assists the batteries. As we take a look at the rear of the cab, 
like a majority of haulers, that back seat does make down into a bed. And you can put it back up by a simple flip of the switch. Just like that. Right here is our def tank, which holds six gallons. The latest data shows that we're, they're getting about 400 miles per one gallon of def. It comes with two 50 gallon fuel tanks, one on each side. Now as the truck sitting here, it balances out. It, they are connected. However, when you go to fuel the truck, you will need to do that independently. As we take a look at the driver's seat, they're built where we can start the truck from the ground. Now when you start it, only turn that key about halfway. Let the gauges go all the way over and all the way back. If we get in a hurry and start it without those gauges going, there's a chance that it will kick out codes that may not exist. This little pedal here is for when you're sitting in the driver's seat, you press that to adjust the steering wheel. It had, this truck is air ride, so right here is where we adjust the seats, hot versus cold, and this is for the lumbar system. Right here is the kill switch. As much electricity as runs through this truck, it's just a good practice to get into whenever you shut it off to shut that kill switch off. That will avoid any stray voltage running through the truck. This is the block heater for winter months or people in cold climates. You can plug that in to keep everything warm. Now that we could take a shot of the tires, these are Michelin 255, 80, 22.5. And if we could zoom in right here, the Summit Hauler brand comes with tire balancers. So that's basically an additional drum placed right there that has several BBs and a little bit of hydraulic oil. So as you start to go and pick up speed and gain momentum, that balances the entire rotating mass from the tire to the hub to the rim, all of that is balanced. So not only does that give us a smoother ride, you know, as we're going down the road, but will also prolong tire life up to 45%. Now let's take a look underneath the hood. That is the Cummins 8.9 liter engine. It is coupled with the Allison 3200 transmission. It offers 350 horsepower. And as you can tell, things are kind of color coordinated under here. So wherever we see yellow is stuff that, that basically you and I can check. For example, here's the oil and straight across is where we would um, add antifreeze to it. Now I showed you guys where the batteries are before, clear back there under the back seat. So if we ever are in a situation where we need to jump the truck, as opposed to fighting with all that, to actually put the terminals up here. So we can jump the truck right here. Now let's say we are underneath the hood checking oil or if we have to jump the truck, wherever the case may be, and a gust of wind comes up, it's gonna stop. It's not gonna squish us underneath there. The only way to get that hood down is to manually force it down. This specific truck is stock number 5N1914. Now as we walk around to the front of the truck, we notice a couple of things. The grill is very unique. None of the competition has this. It really dresses the truck up. In addition, the bumper is broken into three parts. So say if something happens and we take a hit right here. Well, we'll simply replace that instead of the entire bumper. The hood is made of compressed 
fiberglass. That's not just a single sheet laying over there. Multiple sheets compressed. Not only does that make it tougher, but if we need to fix it, that makes it easier to repair. An example of the toughness of this truck, about a year ago, we had a bad hailstorm come through and the pickups on the lot simply got demolished. But you couldn't even tell by taking a look at the freight liners that the storm had even come through. As we take a look on the passenger side, You'll notice a very soft black leather, the most comfortable seats on the market today. Air right on this side as well. Plenty of room up here. The air filter access is actually underneath right there. As we take a look back here, the first thing we're gonna notice whenever we open any door is just how much room is in there. So that does a couple of things for us. After a long 12 hour drive, it doesn't feel like you've gone that far, but perhaps and more importantly is a safety thing. You know, as big as the truck is, we're up off the ground. So we can sure see hazards coming at us as well as coming at us from the side. So a little history in terms of how do we, the trucks get to this point where we're able to market them. Well, the cabin chassis is purchased directly from Freightliner. From there, they go to Indiana. And in the state of Indiana, they build that conversion for us. The Summit Hauler conversion is strictly from this specific store. So we help design, but all the building and construction is done in Indiana. And from that point, they come to here. And from that, we do a final check just to make sure everything's perfect and ready to go and at that time they're put on the market and accessible to you. So with that being said if you have any other questions on this truck or anything else on the lot please feel free to give me a call. Again my name is Larry Vickers. My cell phone number is 970-370-4067. The work number is 303-684-3404 or feel free to email me larry.vickers at transwest.com. Thanks for tuning in today.